Hello everyone and welcome to this talk. Today I want to tell you a little bit about your recent work that I have with Vikas Sinouani and Jean-Bernard Lasserre on motion planning. So in this work we have combined ideas from moment optimization and semi-definite programming in order to plan the path, a collision-free path, for a moving robot. And my goal today is of course to tell you about this new and novel technique for motion planning, but I also want to bring to your attention a whole set of tools from moment optimization and semi-definite programming that are surprisingly not that well known in the robotics community and show you how they can be applied in practice to a practical problem like motion planning. So with that being said, uh, let's get started and I hope you enjoy the rest of this talk. Given a starting configuration for our robot and a destination configuration we want to reach, in an environment that is filled with obstacles that are static or dynamic, our goal is to find the shortest path that goes from the start to the destination while avoiding all the obstacles on the way. And let's talk a little bit about these, uh, these obstacles. So we choose to model the obstacles with polynomial functions. More specifically, every obstacle is given by an inequality like this one. So g here is a polynomial function in both time t and x. And this framework is fairly general and allows us to express a wide variety of obstacles that could be moving, morphing, disappearing, etc. And now, let me formulate the motion planning problem as an optimization problem. And we're going to see later on why that's useful. So what I'm looking for is a path, or a function, that maps the interval of time 0 capital T to Rn. And in fact, I want the shortest path. So I'm going to minimize the integral over time of the L2 norm of x dot, which is the time derivative of x. I also have a bunch of constraints. So this constraint here says that I want to start from x0. This constraint is saying that I want to reach xt. And these bunch of constraints are for collision avoidance. So for every obstacle k, I have a function gk that depends on time and x, and I want this gk to be non-negative. And what this is saying is that at time t, I want my path to avoid obstacle k. So that's what this constraint is saying. So, so far I have not done much. I have just simply reformulated the motion planning problem as an optimization problem. When you think about the motion planning problem, you realize that it's an optimization over an infinite dimensional space, and not a particularly nice one. Uh, we're talking about the space of all functions that map some interval of time to Rn. Now, if you want to do computation and devise efficient algorithms, you need to work with a parametric family of functions that is amenable to computation. So in this work, we propose to work with piecewise linear functions. Now, we could have picked other families of functions like piecewise polynomials or piecewise rational functions and the same analysis we'll go through, but why go complicated when you can go simple? So again, we picked uh, piecewise or we picked paths that have a fixed number of pieces, let's call the number of pieces S. Working with piecewise linear path has some additional side benefits. For example, piecewise linear functions are universal approximators, in the sense that any reasonably looking path can be approximated uniformly by a piecewise linear one if the number of pieces is high enough. And when the number of pieces is low or keep kept low on purpose, this can act as a regularizer to the problem, because this prevents the algorithm from finding some paths that are too complicated or do some crazy things. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to look at our time interval, 0 capital T, and we're going to split it into S pieces of equal length. And now on every piece or every sub-interval of time, the path is going to start at some point ui and going to move along a constant direction with constant speed vi. With this parameterization, the collision avoidance constraint is now given by this inequality. 
This is saying that between i t over s and i plus 1 t over s, when piece i is active, if I plug in u i plus t v i inside g, I want to get an n-negative quantity. The difficulty of the problem really comes from handling this constraint. The existing algorithms fall into two categories. The first category is one where we search for upper bounds on the length of the shortest feasible path. Maybe finding the shortest feasible path is hard, so what we can do is search for an upper bound on this length. This is typically done by trying to find a feasible path that might not be optimal, but hopefully avoids all the obstacles at all times. And this is the broadest category where most of the algorithms fall. In this category, we have algorithms based on sampling techniques, where you expand an accessibility graph by sampling points in the space according to some heuristic. And now the problem reduces to finding a path inside this newly constructed graph. RRT is such an algorithm. A second type of algorithm rely on local optimization. So you view the motion planning problem as an optimization problem, like we did before, and then you can apply any local search method to this optimization problem, like some variants of gradient descents, for example. In the second category of algorithms, we have exact method. So these methods take a description of the problem and give you the exact solution. The only uh, algorithms of this type that I am aware of are based on computational algebraic geometry. But the problem with these methods is that they are extremely expensive and think exponential or double exponential time complexity, which makes them quickly impractical. Okay, so now when you stare at this picture, uh, it really leaves something to be desired, right? Because what about lower bounds? Let's say you use RRT and it gives you some feasible path. Can you tell how far you are from being optimal? It would be good if we had some technique that gives us an idea of uh, how far from optimality we are. Today, I want to show you a novel method for motion planning that is based on moment optimization and semi-definite programming. And this method will give you upper bounds, meaning that it will search for feasible paths. And at the same time, it will try to find lower bounds on the shortest feasible path. This part is novel and traditional algorithms don't give you such guarantees and people usually don't even think about this kind of questions. A really appealing property of our method is that it lets you trade off efficiency for accuracy. More specifically, you have control over any integer r and if you pick r to be small, let's say r equals 2, then the algorithm runs super fast but it might not give you the best possible path. On the other hand, if you let r go to infinity, the running time of the algorithm will increase, but the upper bound and lower bound that you get will converge to each other, meaning that the path that the algorithm gives you will be optimal. Okay, so how does our algorithm work? So remember, we want to handle this constraint. If we didn't have the quantification over time, this constraint will be a simple polynomial inequality that could be readily handled by the method of moments. If you have not seen this technique before, uh, it's one of those times where it seems that we are making the problem harder than it should be at first. So the way it works is that instead of optimizing directly over UIs and VIs, we introduce a new distribution, let's call it mu, over such UIs and VIs. So think of mu as a distribution over feasible path. So you can sample feasible paths from this distribution. Now you might ask, why is this useful? Or how is this useful? Can I even write down the original constraint that I had in terms of this newly introduced distribution mu? The answer turns out to be yes. And the idea behind it is pretty clever. So in order to make g in a negative, we multiply g by, a, by the square of a so-called test function f, and we take expectation with respect to mu, and we impose that this expectation is non-negative. One direction is easy to see. 
If g is the negative and you multiply it by a square, which is by construction the negative, and you take an expectation, of course you're going to get a non-negative quantity. The converse happens to be true as well. Under some mild assumptions, if this expectation is the negative for a large family of test functions, f, then any ui and vi that you sample from mu will also make g non negative. The method of moment now suggests that we take f to be a polynomial function of some given degree r. And the magical thing that happens when you take f to be a polynomial of some given degree is that the problem becomes a semi-definite program, which we know how to solve efficiently. And the semi-definite program that we get, its size will depend directly on this integer r. Since we are dealing with a motion planning problem, we have the additional complication coming from the fact that we have a dependence on time. So we don't have a single constraint, we have a continuum of constraints parameterized by time. So we don't have a semi-definite program, what we actually have is a time-varying semi-definite program. In order to deal with this additional complication, we call upon this result from algebraic geometry. Now, I won't go into the details of this theorem, but what it is actually saying is that we can turn a time-varying semi-definite program into a vanilla semi-definite program that we know how to solve. At any rate, for any fixed integer r, when you solve the corresponding semi-definite program, you get a provable lower bound on the length of the shortest path. These lower bounds can be made arbitrarily tight by solving larger and larger semi-definite programs. And the size of these semi-definite programs grows linearly with the dimension of the configuration space. And finally, our approach handles continuous time natively without resorting to time discretization. By leveraging rank minimization techniques, we are able to turn our moment-based method into a practical motion planner that we call MMP. MMP natively handles continuous time constraints and also scales linearly with the configuration space dimensionality. On several benchmarks, our approach outperforms several competing methods on both the quality and the length of the paths produced. Here, for instance, the configuration space is the unit box in 3D, and there are 10 sphere based obstacles that are moving with random velocities. RRT finds a feasible path, but this path is unnecessarily jerky. Our approach succeeds in finding a piecewise linear path with 10 segments that is both shorter and smoother. In this other example, we require two arms to collaborate to go from an initial to a goal configuration without colliding. Of all competing baselines, our approach succeeds in finding the shortest and smoothest trajectory.